Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. If the body can get sick, it can also get well. It's about lifestyle. It's about the choices that we make every single day, and the choices we make every single day can and will determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. So it's about thriving. It's about making better choices. But again, you're the one that has to do that. We can't do it for you. We could teach you. Take you around down the right path, but ultimately you have to make that. In Shape is our new system and program. If you haven't checked it out yet, go to the website. See how to really get your body in the way that it needs to. Our new In Shape system is powerful and can help you reach your health goals. Now let's kick off and talk about a couple of things. When it comes to a couple of items, uh, I want to look at the spots your, doc, uh, your doctor should look at for skin cancer. Now, when it comes to our skin, of course, we're, people are concerned about skin cancer. Melanoma is the big one. But I want to talk about some different areas that we have to look at when it comes to skin cancer that are really important. And again, you've got to look at yourself every single day or have someone check your back and do all that. After the age of about 30, you really need to start being concerned about that. Dermatology is is a, an emerging specialty that's just very, very strong. Of course, if you live in the warmer climates, people are dealing with it more and more. But remember, it's not just sun exposure that can lead to skin cancer, but it's also a couple of other items that can do that. I mean, poor diet can lead to cancer at any level, and you want to make sure that someone is is taking a look and watching over that. So a couple of spots that your doctor should look at for skin cancer. Number one is the belly button, and you can look at these too. Skin cancer, cancer can hide there. You want to look for any type of little brown uh, raised lesion or even a little red raised lesion that could be one of the culprits for that. The neck is also important. So if you're a ponytail wearer and women with short hair can get a lot of sun back there, but it may neglect to get F SPF on the area. So your neck's a big hot spot for skin cancers as well. Ears and the lips, a lot of times we don't cover those areas. And cancer can be more aggressive in these areas more than others because we really don't get the protection. And another form of melanoma, ALM, typically strikes in the palm of your hands. So the palm of your hands, you want to be really careful, as well as the nail beds and the soles of the feet. Legs are the number one place for Caucasian women to get melanoma. So make sure that you, you've got some kind of of protection on on your skin and look for the legs to to you know anything that looks weird or any kind of abrasion or skin little lesion that looks different pops up out of nowhere make sure you get it looked at and get it checked so it doesn't turn into anything but that's extremely important to have looked at and men too you, know, you want to keep a lookout on your on your skin for that because skin cancer can lurk in a lot of different ways you'd be really careful it really can and if you live in the warmer climates, Arizona, and you live along the coastline anywhere, Texas and Florida, California, just be cautious. I mean, skin cancer can pop up anytime. And they say that it's what's happened when we were younger, that, you know, the damage that happened when you were a kid is typically what you carry with you. And, and there's truth to that. But still, you don't want to just say, well, I got burned a lot as a kid, so to heck with it. You really want to take care of your skin in a lot of ways on a regular basis to keep it protected as we age, because it's extremely important uh, for longevity and for the potential of staying away from basal cell carcinomas and, and the melanomas, you want to do everything you can to keep the skin as healthy as possible. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call or go to the website. Let's go to the phones and talk with Leah. Hi, Leah. Yes, yeah, so I'm calling about. Oh, my slipping felt my, hit my knee and it's why it be so sometimes, sometimes, you know, so I don't know what can I take for it help. It, um, somebody told me it might be toe and ligament in there. So I need to get some awesome. kind of vitamin or some kind of herb to help hit it back. Well, if you, if you think you've damaged it, you definitely want to go to your physician and get it looked at. I mean, they can do an MRI and find out exactly if there's anything that's been damaged. They might even be able to do some basic testing in the office to be able to see if there's anything going on. I would have that looked at first. Very important to see if there is a ligament damage at all or if it's just a slight sprain or whatever it might be. But I'll get that looked at and they can check that out and give you some, some good advice and information. 
you don't want to just start taking a bunch of herbs to correct it. You know, that's one thing. I know it sounds simple. Let's just take a pill for it. But a lot of times you, you really want to know in a t- targeted way what's going on. And that's that's first and foremost. You want to see exactly what's happening. Make sure you've got a good game plan surrounding that. And then you can build from there. That's the, st- that's the starting point, in my opinion, for what you're dealing with. I mean, got, you have to understand if it's just something basic or if it's something that needs a little bit more therapy. And again, there's laser therapy that can be done. Supplements can help, but I mean, it's not, it may not be the only thing. And your eating habits have got to be really, really good for the healing process. If, For example, if you don't have enough vitamin D and your minerals are not where they need to be, meaning that like boron, calcium, magnesium, uh, any of those, if they're not where they need to be, then the, the bones and the joints are not going to be able to function the way they need to. Hyaluronic acid is really important. It's been shown to be extremely effective for supporting the joints. But if, again, if your body doesn't have what it needs, it's not going to be able to produce the results that you need for optimal healing. That's why I need, you first want to find out exactly what happened, and then you can go from there. All right, 888-283-7272. That's 888 7272 Give us a call or go to the website. What's interesting is so many people... They struggle, and they want to know what to do to feel better, lose weight, have more energy. We've got a new system out called In Shape, and In Shape. I mean, it's funny because when I was younger, growing up, the coaches used to say, you know, so we got to get in shape. And when I was getting older, you know, your parents or uh, people, your friends, well, you need to get in shape. We kind of hear that a lot. What does that really mean? Well, to be in shape really means to be vibrant. To be in shape means to be fit to be agile, to be able to play athletics, to go and play a game of tennis, or to be able to run around and play with your kids and not get hurt, to go water ski if you want to. To be in shape means that you're at your body's normal set point and you're at your normal weight and you can really begin to thrive in every area of your life. There's some basic principles to be able to do that, but you have to follow the basics to be able to get there. Our InShape system and InShape program, you can find that at the website and it can really help you be able to pinpoint where your body needs to be and what the root causes of where you are, why they're there, and then what to build from there. Our great team members, lifestyle providers around the country can help as well. Coming up, we're going to jump in. We've got more questions about your health. Plus, one of the biggest culprits in our overall food system that is causing us to gain weight, causes more diabetes, and causes really, some are saying, cancer in a lot of ways that we have to be really concerned about. I'm going to talk about that, what to do with it, and how to avoid it when we come back. Plus, I'll be taking your calls and your questions. Go to the website and shoot us an email there. If you're looking for increased strength, increased endurance, and better recovery, then look no further than an all-natural nutritional supplement called creatine hydrochloride. Concrete is the brand, and it's the most absorbable form of creatine hydrochloride found today. Now, creatine is not just for athletes. You've probably heard that before, but concrete, creatine hydrochloride, is for the everyday person looking to improve their health. Listen, I started taking creatine in college when I was a strength industry coach at Florida State University, and I've taken it every Ever since my college years and it's made a massive difference in my life everything in my body I believe is functioning better because of creatine creatine hydrochloride I've moved over to using concrete and it is the best form of creatine on the market concrete creatine hydrochloride is available at most Walmart stores and on walmart.com or any store that carries nutritional supplements just make sure to look for concrete brand creatine hydrochloride and watch your endurance your strength and your recovery and your immune system get boosted today To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. Welcome back to the show. So glad you joined us today. 
It's great to have you with us. Always working with your health and inspiring you to be better. Because really, 20% of this whole game is understanding what to do. 80% of it is doing it. It's the behavior. And that's where the greatest challenges come in is with people trying to figure out the best ways to thrive and the best ways to get to that next level in their health and their life. So we're talking about a, a f- culprit that's in our food supply. And when I say this, you're going to roll your eyes. You're going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of that a million times. Well, if you've heard of it a million times, then why do we still eat it in abundance every single day? That's the question. Why do we do that? Well, there's reasons for that. And we're talking about sugar. So sugar is is an incredible tasting compound for a lot of people they really love the sweet taste of it but it has some detrimental effects everything from arthritis to disrupting brain chemistry to potentially having cancer causing effects to causing diabetes and also throwing the body into an inflammatory tailspin so getting it out of our lives is very important you might think well i don't use sugar packets and i don't drink sodas and i don't drink those sugary soft drink things and so I'm good. And I'll eat desserts. Well, I'm good. Well, it's hidden in a lot of other foods too. And that's what I want to talk about. So here's some foods that you think, well, these are healthy, but they're actually loaded with sugar. So granola bars, you ever heard of that? So they're everywhere, right? Get all the people that are healthy riding their bike and running down the beach and they eat their granola bar. Well, it prepackaged granola bar is nothing but pretty much sugar. And although they'll have some oats in there and they'll, they'll, you know, sell you on that, it's loaded full of sugar. And now I'm not just saying the granola brand, I'm just saying the, the overall style of bar and you can make these and make them really, really healthy. But again, many of them, just check the grams of sugar on them. There are some that are really good that don't have hardly any sugar in them at all, but just keep note of that cereal in a generic sense can be one too. So it's a great way to start the day if it's the right kind. But you start adding in, if you look at the processed cereals and the 13 grams or 15 grams of sugar per serving, you're into just a sugar tailspin with that. And that's one thing you want to avoid. Better to go with maybe a couple of eggs, a bowl of fresh berries in the morning. A big smoothie is a great way to go, quick and easy. If you're wanting something similar, get gluten-free oatmeal, put some cinnamon with it, throw some walnuts in there, and you've got a great carbohydrate portion of the breakfast, but don't forget to do a couple of eggs or some protein powder or something like that to get your protein in. That's important because there's not any protein at all, well, like one or two grams in the oatmeal to be effective. Barbecue sauce, here's another one. So we all get frustrated with uh, condiments. Well, barbecue sauce, the ingredients are pretty much honey, molasses, and brown sugar. And the bottle brands have as many as 11 grams of added sugar per serving. So every time you slather on the barbecue sauce, you're adding sugar to your meat. So be cautious with that. A lot of the condiments, it's easy to get lost in in a lot of the extra calories and also the extra sugar along the way. Ketchup's another big one. With one teaspoon of sugar in every tablespoon serving, that's a lot. Ketchup has a startling amount of added sugar. And... A lot of it's corn syrup. Many of the the ketchup products have corn syrup in them and are just loaded. So you got to be cautious with it. Tomato sauces and soups, that's another one. If it's a it's if it's a sweet tasting tomato soup, you know it's got tons of sugar. Always check the labels. You have to learn to be a label reader. The better you are at reading labels, the better off you're going to be all the way around. So just be cautious with that. Now, fruit juice, here's another one. And one of the keys that you look at fruit juice and you think, well, that's healthy, right? It's orange juice or it's apple juice or it's grape juice, but it's concentrated sugar because all the pulp and the main products of the fruit are gone and you just, you're left with the juice and that's it. So one glass of juice could have almost 40 grams of sugar in it. I mean, it is, you might as well be drinking a soda, a full blown sugary soda, really. Now, there's some health benefits to it. I mean, orange juice and all, they have some benefits because it comes from a natural source. But what it does to your body and the sugar content of what it does is the same. Lemonade's another one. Lemons are wonderful. And putting lemons in water is wonderful. But the sugar that's added to it at about 30 grams per glass is not so wonderful. So if you want an option for lemonade, get some purified water or distilled water, put a whole lemon in there, and put some stevia extract in there. Taste amazing. And it's an easy way to do that. All right. For the Southern folks, and I'm a Southern folk, sweet tea is another one. So it's so funny when you go to the South. When I go up North and travel, 
It's just a habit. I like tea. I drink a lot of tea. So when I go to a restaurant or something, I'll say I'll have unsweet tea, and they just look at me like I have three heads. <laughs> they're like, we don't do that here. It's almost like they're insulted, and it's almost like, why don't you go back down to your south down there? Because we are, it's like, it's just funny. So uh, sweet tea is something that obviously a lot of people in the south east region and even southern in texas and all it's just a part of the culture so if you can switch over to the unsweet tea add stevia if you want to or learn to like the bitter taste of tea and switch over to green teas they're really good for you because of all the antioxidants but just avoid the sugar again one glass of sweet tea could have 35 40 grams of sugar in it it is wreaking havoc on your body on your skin on your pancreas on the entire aging process Really, really tough on your system. Flavored yogurt, here's another one. I have people tell me all the time, well, you know, I eat yogurt all the time. Isn't that healthy? I get that all the time. It's like, I, I, I say, but it, what, what flavor did you have? Because if it's not the bitter yogurt that tastes terrible, then you've got sugar in it. And one little container of yogurt contains about 20 grams of sugar overall, you know, 15 probably. And it's just too much. You don't need it. It's got about six to seven teaspoons of added sugar they say, in one little container. So a better option is to go with maybe a, the plain yogurt, organic yogurt, goat milk yogurt, coconut milk yogurt, any of those, and add a little packet of stevia or some fresh blueberries to it and make your own. Don't let someone else control the sugar content of your food. You control that so that you can control your health. Dried fruit's another one. If you're going to eat fruit, eat fruit. Eat an orange, eat an apple. But don't do the dried fruits. The dried fruits are loaded with sugar, loaded. And a lot of times the benefits are not that great. So they do have plenty of vitamins and minerals and and good stuff in there, but the sugar does outweigh that and it can be detrimental in the long run. Remember, fruit sugar total, you only want about 40 grams a day. More than that can start making you gain the weight. Did you know that you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. To find out more, visit the show online, inshapenetwork.com. Remember, if you're struggling with your health, body can get sick, you can also get well. It's all about lifestyle. Powerful. All you have to do is learn which way to go, what choices to make. It's amazing what the body can do, but you have to give it what it needs. Now, one of the big keys that we have to focus on, especially when you're looking at overall health care, is to focus on keeping your structural part of your body healthy. And what I mean by that is the spine. So that's the one area we just don't think about. I mean, you think about it every single day. The spine is what keeps us healthy. It's what holds your entire body up. Matter of fact, your nervous system goes from your brain to the spinal cord, which goes down through the spine. And then you have different nerves that go throughout the body that control everything. The way your eyes see, the way your body moves, controls the nervous system, all of that is extremely important so when you look at that you think well my goodness i mean that's what actually causes the body to work but we don't ever take care of it it's like your teeth all right your teeth are important and if you didn't go to the dentist on a regular basis then you know of course your teeth could get all in a bad place so we want to get that looked at on a regular basis so one of the millions of people who spend their day at desk jobs i want to talk about sitting for a minute overall posture and this includes me and because I'm, I'm either you know doing radio or doing television or in the road or in a plane or whatever. And so it's important to really take care of our spinal health so that we take care of our optimal health. Because, again, if our spine's healthy, then we're going to be healthy. So millions of people spend their day sitting on a regular basis. I mean, it's very, very it's normal. So we call that ergonomics. And the way your desk is set up at work, the way you're set up at home, whatever it is, is extremely important. So we've got to get the ergonomics right in the body. 20 years ago, chiropractors spent most of the time 
taking care of people who move too much. And today, most of the problems we see are people who don't move enough. This is one of the chiropractic physicians uh, in this recent study that was done. So the price you pay for sitting all day, here's some basics. The people are not meant to sit in a cramped position all day. Our body needs to be in motion to be healthy. So without movement, your muscles and ligaments don't get a good blood supply, and that's when things begin to transition and change. So some ways sitting at desk for long hours can negatively affect your health. Here's a couple. Number one, spine damage. Sitting at the desk can result in a pinched nerve or herniated disc. Damage to your spine may not affect longevity, but it will affect the quality of of longevity. Number two is computer eye strain. So many people who use, you can use a computer for three or more hours a day have symptoms of computer eye strain. That can include blurred vision, also headaches and neck aches. A desk job that keeps you sitting all day also can lead to conditions with heart health. So being overweight and underactive is bad for your heart and it can decrease your longevity. When you're sitting, you're not burning calories for the most part and you're not getting the aerobic exercise that your heart really needs. So here's a couple things with your desk job do's and don'ts. Most Americans sit down to work and poor posture and prolonged sitting and poorly thought out workstations are a major cause of back and neck pain for the time lost at work. Tips can help practice good ergonomics. Number one, ergonomics is the science of designing the workplace to fit the worker. So keep your computer directly in front of you, slightly below eye level and have your hands reach the keyboard without having to bend your wrist. That have good back supports. You want to sit up straight. You don't want to be slouched over and bent over. Maintain a good posture is important because, again, bad posture you can't really do. So twisting, slouching, stretching, and extending your back or neck can cause pain and damage. There's what's called the 50-10 rule. And it's usually in the medical world now we're seeing that because, remember, when we're not moving more than just spinal health, then our body is becoming sedentary and our bodies were never designed for that. So... We start, it's got to use it or lose it principle. So for every 50 minutes of sitting, you need to get up and move around 10 minutes. And that doesn't mean getting to go somewhere else to exercise. Walking for 10 minutes is great exercise. It gets your hips and lower back in motion and gets your heart pumping. So that's important. And this is including driving too. You want to get out and get moving. Take the stairs as well. Using the stairs is a really good aerobic activity and increases your aerobic activity and your range of motion. That's important. You want to stretch your back, so you want to bend forward, touch your toes. If you can't make it down to your toes, touch your knees, but get moving at some level. Keep your knees just slightly bent. They say it can relieve the pressure in the small of your back by putting your hands and hips and leaning forward while you're looking up. Stretch your neck. That's a big one. It's best not to roll your head around in circles. Just tilt your head forward, backward, and side to side in stretch positions you can hold for 30 seconds. Loosen your upper back, too, so you can relieve the tension in your shoulders and upper back by keeping your arms at your sides with your elbows bent at 90 degrees. And that's a great way to do that as well. So if you're stuck with a desk job, a lot of people are moving to standing workstations, and this is really cool. If if you're in a cubicle or something, you know, you may have to stay down for being on the phone all day, but ask your your employer, whoever you work with, to see if they can transition and switch for you to have more of a standing style workstation that you can really get behind. It makes a big difference. It really does. And it can help tremendously when you're looking at building an overall game plan for a, for better health and for your options. Because remember, as we get older, we start losing a lot of our ability in our spine and uh, the integrity of it can really begin to decline as well. So you've got to keep the spine healthy. It's extremely important. We sit all day. We need to start doing more standing. And, you know, of course, that means better shoes and it means better posture, working on the core muscles, uh, low backs and, and your, your abs, all that, keeping everything tight and the way it needs to be because the sitting really does do detriment to our health in the long term. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. 7272. Give us a call or go to the website. Now, one of the keys, too, we're going to jump into in just a moment. I want to get into our foods. And remember, food can bring health to the body or it takes health out of the body. So learning the type of foods that your body needs is extremely important. So we want to eat the right kind of foods. And we're going to talk about a powerful superfood in just a moment. First, I want to go to the phones and talk to Carl. Hi, Carl. Uh, I have a question about gastrointestinal health, um, whether or not I need HCL, the hydrochloric acid, uh, to break down food. Um, I've had a GI doctor 
say no, and a naturopath say absolutely yes. So just a question about that. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think there's several things you want to focus on. Digestive enzymes are really good. Probiotics are really good. They're my two favorites when it comes down to overall digestion. Bromelain is found in pineapples. And the bromelain is a, is a real powerful enzyme, proteolytic enzyme is what we call it. It breaks down proteins and really gets the body working at a, a much higher level. And if you don't get enough of that, then that's where the challenges happen. So you start getting acid reflux because you're not breaking your foods down very well and the food has nowhere to go. So there's quite a bit you have to look at when you're looking at different food groups and how the body gets what it needs. So I would look at the enzymes, plus you want to look at even intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has really come on strong in the medical world and in the health world because of what it does to the body. Remember, when you, when you don't eat for a certain period of time, intermittent it goes like this. Look it up. But some of the basics, you eat dinner. And then you don't eat again till the next evening dinner. Now, your your dinner can be at 9 o'clock at night, and you can eat again at 3 o'clock the next day. That's not a big deal. But it's just a, it's the point of doing that. Most of it's sleeping, but it gives your digestive tract a chance to rest. And that makes a tremendous difference in your overall health. All right? 888 Give us a call. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, just check out the website and someone can help you along the way. If you're looking for our InShape system, uh, our program, that is really a great way to learn how to feel better, lose weight, have more energy, and just get your body where it needs to be. Sometimes you feel like you just kind of lost it, made some decisions and didn't really know where your body was headed and then finally figured it out. Well, that's what we can do. We can help you really go to that place and get your body as healthy as possible. Well, go to the website. You'll find our InShape program there as well. All right. Tomatoes are food of the day. Now, remember, food either brings health to the body or what does it do? It takes health out of the body. See, you're learning already. So tomatoes are what we're talking about. They're considered a vegetable. They're actually a citrus fruit, believe it or not. And they're incredibly versatile. You know, in the 1800s, they become a staple food in the United States. They have a high acid content, which makes it perfect for canning. A medium tomato is has plenty of nutrients in it. They can ward off cancer. Numerous studies have shown that the more tomatoes people eat, the lower the risk of certain cancers, especially lung, stomach, and prostate because of a component called lycopene that's responsible for the red color. It protects our cell walls and protects the cells as well. Prevents DNA damage. This is one that I think is so powerful. So our DNA is what we're made of. That's what our cells are made of. And the tomatoes are high in important antioxidants such as vitamin C and vitamin A. They can help fend off a lot of the conditions in there and help against the free radicals. Consequently, a lot of tomatoes can help ward off age-related diseases like atherosclerosis and diabetes. Also, reduce of heart disease on this. Seven to ten servings of tomato products a week had about 29% lower risk of cardiovascular disease than women who consume less than one serving and a half of these products a week. Protect against thrombosis as well. Another study showed that drinking eight ounces of tomato juice daily reduced platelet aggregation significantly and helped as well. Ward off inflammation. This is a big one. So a double blind study looked in with tomatoes and found that drinking a glass of tomato juice can reduce blood levels of TNF alpha by 34%. And the TNF alpha causes inflammation. High levels have been found in individuals with the most chronic degenerative diseases, such as heart disease, cancer, and osteoporosis. So pretty incredible when you look at it to see exactly what's happening with tomatoes and adding them into your foods, what that can do for your overall health. It's pretty amazing. So encouraging to say the least at what we struggle with, getting the right kind of foods in can make a huge impact. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, 
It's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. find all health programming on demand that we produce so you want fitness shows health shows healthy eating shows all of that is right there on the network you can find it on your tablet your phone your computer your smart tv whatever it is we are there to help you each and every day that's what it's all about it's about giving you the help that you need to thrive and not just barely make it that's what the show lifestyle is our medicine and don't forget it long sleep time you could have a higher stroke risk so adults who sleep more than eight hours a night can face a high risk of stroke, a new study suggests. The long sleepers were 46% more likely to have a stroke than those who only got six to eight hours of sleep, researchers found. They said previous studies have always suggested a possible association between sleep and risk of stroke. So there's a balance. The one thing we learn out of this is that lack of street of sleep rather can lead to higher stress levels, which can raise blood pressure and stroke risk. But too long a sleep can actually do the opposite. The changing sleeping patterns are more of the concern. Long sleepers would be wise to monitor their lifestyle, eating a healthy diet, exercising regularly to avoid a lot of these cases. So, again, they're finding the sweet spot to really be about seven to eight hours. I wouldn't really go over that. And if, if you're a sleeper and like being in that bed or you don't need to get up for anything, you might want to just at eight, just call it a, call it a night, get up and, and get up and move around and start training your body to be done because the seven to eight hours is the sweet spot. Really? No matter what the age is, if you're a teenager, you need more sleep. That's for sure. But if you're 40, you don't need that much sleep. So you need to need to crank it back a little bit and get in that, in that good sweet spot to, for your health. And you don't need to be sleeping anyway. Don't sleep your life away. Get up and make something happen. Triple eight, two, eight, three, seven, two, seven, two. That's triple eight, two, eight, three. 7272 lines are open. Give us a call or go to the website. Let's go to Barry. Hi, Barry. The burning of my feet, my hands, and my mouth. Okay. All right, let's see. Well, one of the things, if you've got burning feet, hands, and mouth, definitely go to your physician. And get checked because neurologically there could be a couple of things to to look at that need to be checked into. And one of the keys that it could be there could be a nutritional deficiency. Very common. It could be something simple as vitamin B six or vitamin B five. Okay. But if it's not, then you gotta have that looked at and and then of course one thing I would look at for sure is making sure that that the deficiencies are, deficiencies aren't there, and the blood work can always do that. Okay, it's a simple little blood test your, your physician can do. They can check it, and and easily with burning, a lot of times there's a strong nutritional deficiency with it. Now there could be a neurological condition going on too, and that's why you want to get the testing done. And once they get that done, of course you can build a game plan from there. But that's that's where you start. You don't want to just sit back and do nothing. And it's not just take this herb and you'll be okay. <laughs> so you definitely want to get that looked at and and have them get a full analysis, but usually there's something neurological and nutritional that go along with that. All right. Triple eight, two, eight, three, seven, two, seven, two. That's triple eight, two, eight, three, seven, two, seven, two. Lines are open with questions about your health. You can give us a call or go to the website. Let's go to Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Um, low energy thyroid issues. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Well, if you've got low energy, 
And if you think there's a thyroid condition going on, I, I would check with your doctor for sure on, on the test. Make sure the numbers are where they need to be. If they haven't checked cortisol, I would have them look at that. Also, vitamin B12 is something that is sometimes overlooked and not checked into that thoroughly. You could have some anemia going on. But a lot of times the adrenal glands, which are the body's stress glands, these little glands that's on top of the kidneys. That causes low energy many times. And that could be a direct correlation with the pituitary gland, which is a little gland in the brain that controls all the functions in the body. So if you get the pituitary gland working and make sure it's working at peak order, then the adrenals and the thyroid tend to work very well together as well. I would just get that looked at and first and foremost. And that's the that's the big key. Okay. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. Now prostate health is something that guys we're really concerned about. It is. And just like women are concerned about breast cancer, prostate issues are something that are right around the corner for a lot of us seemingly by the research, but there's quite a bit you can do to ward off against that. Now, in Italy, they have actually found an Ayurvedic herb called turmeric, which we know a lot about turmeric, and it's always been known for its help against cancer, but they're now they're finding that for non-cancerous and large prostate, which is called BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia, they're finding that this ancient herb can help reduce an enlarged prostate. They used it for six months, and researchers gave 33 patients diagnosed with BPH, the turmeric extract of curcumin, in addition to BPH treatment, which was no drugs, which is a control group who had the drug. Okay, regardless, they did the placebo test. And the product with the turmeric in it, which has lecithin, okay, was the one that produced the greatest results. So what was interesting is they had almost a 33% reduction in the swollen prostate just by using turmeric. So you probably need more than just you, you sprinkle on your food, but they do make turmeric extract that you can get at your health food store. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer, engineer John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on the show. Together, we can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show. It helps you get well, stay well, and live well. We're diagnosing hope one person at a time. Did you know you could listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book, for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to AsaRx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the AsaRx audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.